So here's what we got. We got Nano Station AC Loco. We actually have two of them. And we've got the PLE injector or adapter, or whatever you want to call it for them. Um, I'm going to show you how to set them up. Uh, these claim to have 450 megs of throughput. Maybe. I don't know. But it's a good solution uh, if you want to get internet out to a shop or a garage or something off of the house. And you don't want to dig in a wire. Uh, these are like, I don't know, at the time they're about 75 bucks a piece. These are like 20 bucks a piece. Um, retail. Or you might be able to find them on the internet for a little cheaper. Um, and they just communicate with each other. You set them up so they face each other, kind of like that. And they go boop, 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 and boop, boop, boop. And yeah, that's how it works. So I'm going to show you how to set them up. Because um, there is some software inside of them that you have to configure. And I'm going to try and stay as organized as possible. I've got a couple of different cables here. Uh, just so you guys can understand what's going on. And then uh, I will show you on the computer how all that setup goes. Alright, so what we have here is what you'll see on the computer. You saw me connect that blue wire to the LAN side of the PoE injector of just one of them. I only have one of them plugged in right now. And that blue wire is going to my computer. Don't plug it into the internet because it'll assign it an IP and then it's more difficult to get into it. Um, they come all set up with a 192.168.1.20 IP. So what you can do is plug directly into your computer and then you go to your IP settings, which will be different for everything. I have Windows 11, so this is how I do it on here. You're going to assign your computer uh, some one dot something address. So we're going to assign my computer dot 10. Put on our sub mask. And then our gateway, the device we're trying to access, is that uh, that ubiquity piece of gear over there so sorry I'm getting distracted talking to you there we go and if you type it in just like that there we go and you see how up here it popped up it says network 106 I've had a lot of networks connected to this computer but basically it's finding something on this network now so we will switch to just a regular Google tab and I'll show you what happens in there. Okay, so we have Google open. All you're going to do is type in the IP address that you want to access. Just like that. And don't put in the wireless part. You don't need it. And then it's going to prompt you with this guy. You're going to click advanced. Proceed. I have my Wi-Fi turned off right now as well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, I'm strictly connected to this device. So we're going to set it up, and I'm in the U.S. We're going to leave the language as English, agree to the privacy policy, and then for the username, I always put uh, admin, and then we'll put in whatever password. Let's just put in admin in this case. Oh, yeah, it has to be at least eight characters. Okay, let's do uh, password. Okay, doesn't like that. There we go. Got one. All right. So you can set it up with whatever you want right there. And that's going to be the new way to access the, this device automatically. Next time you open it up, it's going to ask you that. So as you can see, it propped up with a radio enable deal right there. We're not doing it that way, so just ignore it. Um, this is your nano station right here. We're going to go over to wireless, and we're going to set this one to be the access point. I typically turn point to point mode off. You can leave it on. Um, but we're going to turn it off for this one. The reason for that is if you have point-to-point -point on, you can't do a multi-point connection, which we can go into 
another time if you would like to. Uh, the channel width we're going to leave alone, frame duration, all that stuff. We're not going to control the frequency. Let's just leave this how it is. This is changing the frequency that it's broadcasting on. Um, we, we don't need to change it. This area is not... It is, actually, it is pretty crazy, but for demonstration purposes, we'll just leave this as is. This will work for you most of the time. For the SSID, this is the network that this device is going to put off. So let's change it to Beam. Oh, I think I already have one around here called Beam. Let's change it to uh, Wireless. And let's change the password. Oh, I don't like that one. Let's do, uh, let's just make the password the same as the SSID. And so you can show it right here. And that is going to change this thing's network setting. Now, don't click save changes or anything like that. It's going to try and redo, reboot the device if you do that. Right here, this is the reason that it will try and auto pick an IP if you connect it to your router. This is why you want to connect it to your computer first. So it's set up for DHCP. I'm going to set it up as static because I want this device to be 192.168. Did I put it down in there? Yeah. 1. Dot, uh, I usually start at 249. So I usually make my access point the 249 and then I work my way down from there. The gateway IP, uh, our internet provider gives us a 1.1 1. Uh, 1 IP. And for this, we're just going to go 8.8.8.8. That is the address for Google. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but that's Google right there. Now we're going to switch to services. We don't need to do anything on there. Um, this is where you'll name the device. So you'll click through that and we'll name it uh, AP because it's going to be our access point. And you can name it anything you want, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Now that you've done that, now you click Save Changes. And when you click Save Changes, it's going to kick you out of it because you just changed your IP address up here. This is not dot 20 anymore, so it's not going to reload it. So you have to load up a new Google page and reaccess it. So here we have a fresh Google page. We're going to type 192.168.1.249. We're going to click enter and put in the wireless. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. Now, some computers you might have to go in and change the IP address for what you're trying to access. In this one, we didn't, um, but in some cases, I've had to do it. And it's not allowing me into it. Let's try it without the wireless and see. There we go. Now it brought us into it. And you can see now it's just prompting me for the username and password. And now we're into it. And as you can see, there's nothing over here. That's the next one we're going to set up. So as long as you got into it, it's got your name in it. Let's go here and make sure it saved our IP settings. It did. They're all right here. We're not going to worry about any of this stuff. We don't have to touch it. We don't have to touch that. We don't have to touch that. We already did everything over here. We have our SSID set up as wireless. We have our password as the same. And we didn't touch any of that. We didn't touch any of that. And we're good. So now I will plug in the other one. And I will show you how to set that up. Okay, we have a new Google page opened up. I have connected to the other point-to-point -point and let it power up for a second. It's not going to connect right away. Oh, my Wi-Fi turned on. Let me make sure I turn that off. I don't want that on. Um, we're going to give it a second to turn on because they don't, they don't work right away. They take a couple of seconds before they start working. So now that it's up, 192.168.1.20. And we're going to set this one up a little bit differently because this one's going to be 
receiving. So I'll click advanced, proceed. And we're just going to make our username the same as it was for the last one. We're going to name our password the exact same as it was on the last one as well. Okay, so it brought us in. Now we are in the setup, so to, we're going to ignore this as well. We're going to go in here to wireless. This one is not the access point, so we're going to leave that off. And we had point-to-point -point mode off on the last one, so we're going to turn that off on this one as well. Now we're going to go in here where it says SSID, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different right here. We don't have the same frequency stuff that we did on the last one, and that's because this one isn't putting out anything necessarily. I mean, it is, but it's, it's not. So we're going to go select. And this is going to give us a map of all the things we can connect to. So you can see I, ha I left it plugged in, the other one. And you can see right here it's showing up. So we're going to click on that. Click Select. And now it put that SSID right in there. You could have manually typed it in as well. You don't have to do it that way. And we're going to type it in. The password, make sure it's typed in right. Okay, and then we got to change the IP as well. Click static, 192.168.1.248. Gateway IP, look at that, it's trying to autofill for us. 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, and for system, we're going to just label this receive. Apply the apply the changes and it's going to kick us out of it and we're going to have to open a new page again so we'll do that okay so we got our new google tab open up here in the search bar 192.168.1.248 and it brought us back to it proceed And look at that, it connected. You guys didn't even get to see it do its connection thing. So what will happen is this little bar, all you'll see is one of these bars, and it'll constantly be scanning all these frequencies, and then all of a sudden, it'll lock on, and it'll take a minute, and then it'll grab this other one, and this is terrible throughput right here. This is kind of telling you your throughput. I guess it's not terrible, but it's not so bad, or not super good. And... Um, and the reason for that is I really don't have them pointed at each other. They're sitting right next to each other, all that good stuff. But they are picking each other up. So, and also, don't listen to this distance. In my experience, it's never been correct, ever. Um, I've had them over a mile apart, and it just says 900 and something feet. I've had them 20 feet apart, and it says 900 and something feet. As of right now, they're sitting right next to each other, and it says 984 feet. So... Um, yeah, I don't know if it's something I'm doing or what, but that is how you'll set them up. And so now that I'm connected to, uh, to the REC and they're connected to each other, I can come in here, 192.168.1.249. Oh, I want to get rid of the wireless. I don't want to be, I don't want the wireless. I can connect to the other one. So right here on the left, this local, that's the one that you're viewing. And the remote is the one that you're not viewing. Wow, 345. That's pretty good. Wow. Especially for them not being pointed at each other. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the basics of it. 
can you look down here this is good you want to see this all the way at the max you can look through all your stats right here which I'm not going to go through with you you can see the IP of it but that in a nutshell is how you connect it and then it doesn't matter which one you feed the internet to you could set up you know your remote or not your remote your non-access point I should say because you have one that's access point one that's not access point um, whichever one is the access point is the one you should feed with the internet but you can do it reverse as long as they're communicating with each other that's pretty much the end of it they'll be just fine um, I've had a couple of these up for you know three or four years now and they haven't had any issues once they're up they're kind of up um, once you connect it to the internet for the first time after you've got everything all configured I would log into it and check it for updates because I guarantee they're both going to have updates. Um, and obviously you can't update it without it being connected to the internet. Um, it's got some fancy tools down here. You can do site survey, which is going to give you all of the different stuff that these things are seeing. And this is where choosing that, that channel comes into play because if you have really high amounts of traffic on one channel, then you're probably going to want to pick something else. There's a lot of reserved channels for the, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, but the government is reserving a lot of channels. Um, maybe it's not the government. Maybe it's just somebody else. I don't know. But there's channels that are reserved depending on your area, so just be careful what you choose because if you choose a reserved channel and somebody comes over it that has rights to it, it'll just kick all your stuff off and then you'll lose connection and then it'll recome back up and all that stuff and it's not good. You don't want that. So um, this site survey tool is a really good tool to use though because um, you can see everything everything going on, what channel it's on, all that, or not channel, frequency it's on, all that good stuff. So that's the one I use the most. I don't use really any of these ones. Uh, the alignment you could probably use. Um, but here's the thing, if they're pointed at each other, they'll pick they'll pick them up. Like, you can pretty much just eyeball it. Um, supposedly, I've had people tell me they'll reach eight miles. I don't know that, I don't know that they would reach eight miles. But uh, once you get really far distances, that's when it's going to start struggling to be able to be aimed by the eyeball, maybe. Um, mostly because you can't really see the other one. But I mean, if you're just going from your garage to your house or something... It's going to be no no problem at all. Um, so yeah, that is how you do it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I tried to go into a little more detail. There's not a whole lot of videos that I've seen up on, on how to do this, and it's a super useful tool for connecting different buildings with Wi-Fi. Um, or not Wi-Fi, but, you know, Internet. Um... Yeah, so that's how you do that. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just put it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.